3. kitabı eğitim yapılarının tanıtım gecesi kapsamında aramızda olan mimar Dorte Mandrop'u e, sahneye davet etmeden önce kısaca kendisinden bahsetmek istiyorum. Dorte Mandrop Arkitektar şirketinin kurucusu ve sahibi mimar Dorte Mandrop ağırlıklı olarak eğitim yapılarının yenilenmesi, eğitim ortamı, eğitim ortamlarının farklı disiplinlere göre düzenlenmesi konulu projelere imza atıyor. Yeni Çağ'ın bilgi transferini nasıl oluşturabiliriz sorusundan yola çıkarak öğrenci ve öğretmenler için farklı çözümler sunan Danimarkalı mimar, eski eğitim yapılarını yeni eğitim metotlarına göre yeniden düzenlerken, yarattığı yeni mekanlarla da eğitmenlerin çalışma teknikleri sorgulamalarına yardımcı oluyor. Tasarladığı eğitim yapılarıyla öğrencilerin birlikte çalışmayı öğrenme, yardımlaşma, grup çalışması gibi aktiviteleri mekanın da yardımıyla daha çabuk öğrenmesine olanak sağlıyor. Kendisini mimarlık ve öğrenmenin yeni yolları başlıklı sunumunu gerçekleştirmek üzere sahneye davet ediyorum. Buyurun. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't quite understand what you were saying, but I think it was something nice. Um, and thank you very much, Vitra, for inviting me here. Um, I, I've had a very nice and pleasant day here, and I hope the evening will be as pleasant as well. I think it's a very important initiative that has been done here, and I think the, it's exciting when the industry goes together with the academia or the academic world uh, to create uh, knowledge. So um, I'm excited to be here and be part of this uh, project. Most of our um, projects uh, started in Copenhagen, where my office is based, uh, but we also do work in Scandinavia and Germany. Um, I've uh, chosen to take different e educational projects here today, which is uh, mainly from uh, year zero to year 30, uh, so it's also daycare institution and so forth. So um, an example of each, and most of them are in Copenhagen, uh, and the last one is in Sweden, um, which is a project that we, um, is not yet started, but just won the competition. So um, this is Copenhagen, uh, it's part of a uh, small island, which is uh, part of Denmark, which is consisting of a lot of small islands um, and the country is, as you probably know, quite small too, uh, only five million people. The first project that I'm going to show you is a daycare center uh, in um, part of Copenhagen called Österbo, which is kind of a resourceful area. Uh, and I think um, you probably need to understand a little bit about the um, institution system or the education system in Copenhagen. This is only the placement which is close by the water and the harbour front. Um, but in uh, Denmark the, or in Scandinavia, I think uh, we have mainly the same systems uh, which consist of a kindergarten from one year old uh, or you have a choice or, or possibility of going to kindergarten and then subsidized by the state. You also do pay something but um, the state has a obligation to provide kindergartens uh, for all kids and um, from the year of one years old. Uh, kindergartens are sometimes divided into uh, the smaller kids which is one year to three years old and then you have the um, kindergartens from three to six and then you start in school uh, in preschool and the primary school is um, a nine-year system consisting of the, the first um, school, the, the, the middle school and the last school and then you go to gymnasium which is a, a high school system and that is a three-year uh, three program and after that you go to university uh, whatever you choose to do. <coughs> it's mainly um, the, the schools in, in Denmark are mainly state schools or municipality schools, so the, everything is paid for by the state. And there's also some private schools as well that are mainly going for a special pedagogical system. Um, so, um, but it's still not more than I think 15% uh, uh, that is in private school. But this is the. Um, 
the, the, the first, the kindergarten, and uh, in the corner of a block in Copenhagen, there was a lot of different issues uh, when we started doing this, and we got the assignment because there was a big um, discussion b among the neighbors whether you could have a kindergarten in this height because there was um, a problem with the light conditions inside the courtyard. And as you probably also know, um, Denmark is a dark country in the winter time, and light is an issue. Uh, we don't want to take sunlight away from our outdoor areas. So the, the program here was too big for the site because um, the municipality decided that you could only build in one story um, instead of in five, and um, hereby uh, closing off the discussion with the neighbors. And, uh, to, to be able to build a kindergarten here, you needed to have outdoor area on top of the roof. <clears throat> there's, a, there's some rules uh, that the municipalities decide, uh, and that is mainly that you have to have as much outdoor area for play uh, than indoor area. Another thing was that the site was contaminated. Um, there was a gas station here before, so um, since this had to, to, to stick to a quite a low budget or a, um, a fixed budget, we needed not to put much money into the site contamination. <clears throat> also, we had fire regulations, no windows towards the courtyard or the, the neighbors in the distance of, of five meters, which meant that we could not get daylight into the institution from, um, from two sides. This is the study of the, the, the daylight conditions during the year. Uh, in towards the courtyard, which was uh, an important issue, so we needed to convince the neighbors that they could have um, uh, decent light conditions. Uh, so this is part of the, the study that we did before. Um, and the, the solution for this, um, all these different um, issues was to seal off the, the contamination, not to clean up the site and not pay too much money um, of the budget into this uh, cleaning up. So sealing off was a decent way to, um, to keep the budget low as well. Uh, and also the, the whole daylight situation we needed to take um, care of, of course, to get the daylight into the backyard, <coughs> backyard behind here. The outdoor area had to be on the roof since there was no area left uh, after we've done the program. Um, so one of the solutions was to, to cut out the surface, since we couldn't get daylight from the back, uh, cut out the surface to get daylight in uh, within the building and also to provide for these outdoor small courtyards so every uh, little bay uh, in this uh, kindergarten could go directly out, uh, which is also part of the idea that you could be, you could have direct uh, contact to the outdoors and you're not locked in um, into this kind of prison light situation. You're able to walk out directly from your bay even though you're only one and a half year old. Um, <clears throat> and to make a natural connection to this uh, play area to the roof, we folded down the surface and made an artificial landscape uh, that made a f more fluent connection to the play area to the roof and at the same time the um, this slope could be used as a play area. And I think uh, everybody knows, and a lot of si um, scientific research uh, uh, has shown that if you make kids move and have physical movement, uh, they also learn more. And it's really a basic part of this knowledge. So, so trying to make it as easy as possible to get out and move in between um, your indoor activities and also to make it possible for the more um, active boys to, um, to be outside all day. We, we made this uh, surface fold down to connect to the roof. <clears throat> and this is the basic project, uh, using every area we could uh, to, to be used for activities on the out, outside, um, and of course cutting out these courtyards so you could also go out uh, from the inside. The, the, the basic slope is towards the west, uh, southwest, so by providing umbrellas um, that you could um, mobile uh, umbrellas that you could put into the to the slope, you could also create um, shadow during the summertime, and you could use the slope for different activities like um, a children's uh, theatre or uh, or whatever, uh, where you need to sit down and listen to somebody else. And this is how it looks like. Um, 
quite strange and not very contextual in, the, in this neighborhood with the five-story buildings. Uh, and on the other hand, we are taking care of, of daylight uh, and uh, other things for the neighbors. So it's kind of a, um, a double situation, contextual and not um, contextual. And this is how it, it ended up with a, a lightweight uh, railing to, again, not take any daylight away from the neighbors and with the slope uh, folding up to the, to the outdoor area. Um, and here with the umbrellas and the outdoor area and the context, which is also quite a broken context, not a real Copenhagen courtyard um, block context. Part of the um, idea was to use the square meters as, ac as active as possible and also to m create spaces where you could make uh, the children move more freely instead of having these very small um, homey base where they are um, staying, where they have this homey feeling, but they also need to stretch out and to have activity. So by collecting all small spaces into one big space, uh, we could get uh, an extra play area, uh, which is also a wardrobe. And here's the, the wardrobe. And here the connection between uh, the home base and the outdoor area. So you could walk right out and you have on the slope, we also put uh, fixed bean, bean bags, so you can really use the slope for playing without um, hurting yourself, so you cannot uh, fall very far. You will always fall into a bean bag, which is a lot of fun. And so you would actually use this whole slope from running up and running down and falling into a bean bag. Um, and here you have them. And during the rainy, lots of rain in Denmark. And the play area on top of the roof. So part of this idea is, is to to have the connection between indoor and outdoor as close as possible, even though you're in an urban situation. But also to stimulate the children to move as much as possible. And um, when they measured on these children, their their ability to move was actually better than in the normal institutions in the surroundings. Uh, but what also happened was that um, the teachers working there, and this is, I guess, typically Danish. We live in a very flat country. Uh, they complained that it was straining for them to pick up the children on the slope. So now, if anybody goes to Copenhagen to see this institution, um, we, we had to change the whole slope for, um, to, to stairs so the teachers can pick up the kids without straining their ankles, uh, which is kind of um, an interesting um, priority, I would say. I mean, to, to make priority to the, to, the, to the teachers instead of the children. But that's how it ended. This is, of course, to protect the children a little bit from the exposure towards the street, which is right outside, but still get the daylight in. <coughs> Uh, the next uh, step is the, the, the public school or the primary school, which is um, in Gentofte, which is outside Copenhagen, five kilometers, and the, the context is mainly villas and, and um, open space, suburban um, context. Um, and this is uh, the existing school, which is uh, a quite in Scandinavia, quite famous school called Mungago School, done by Anne Jacobsen in '56. Um, to us, uh, it's uh, an icon also because this was the times where the state was, was putting quite a lot of money into to education and to schools, and they also uh, did it with a, a very high quality. And Anne Jacobsen went, was doing this as a Gesamtkunstwerk, uh, where he designed the chairs, the lamps, the, the fixtures, uh, everything was, was um, designed for the school uh, by Anne Jacobsen. So it was um, uh, a really a piece that you wanted to, to keep as it was. Um, in '96, it was listed by the Cultural Heritage Department, um, so you could not change anything. And for the architects that love Anne Jacobsen was great, but for the municipality it wasn't so great because um, the, the whole idea of the last 10 years or tw uh, almost 20 years has been to change the, the schools according to a new school system where you listen much more to the individual, um, the discussion about the, the different um, 
uh, intelligences uh, that people learn different ways that you learn by some people learn by running some people learn by sitting by themselves some people learn in groups um, and and trying to facilitate uh, that means that you can get um, ideally uh, everybody to to to learn in different ways and you uh, you don't have these traditional um, divisions between the, the, the people that read books and sit on their chair and the people that are kind of crazy and running, running around. <clears throat> Sorry. But when <clears throat> Annie Jacobson was doing this school, the, the way of teaching was uh, one teacher, one classroom, uh, one class, um, and when you could... Um, Sorry. Um, so you could you could either be in your classroom or you could be outside, which was at this time really progressive. You could go directly from your classroom out to a small courtyard that was kind of homey and like a uh, like a villa or like a garden uh, at your home. So this was a, a, at 56, very progressive. You uh, you you looked at the school as being part of your home, uh, and it had to be downscaled. It has to be. Um, homey and, and private. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with the new ways of learning, they needed to have a new structure in the school. They needed to have other spaces that could facilitate um, other ways of learning. They needed small spaces. They needed also bigger, uh, more fluent spaces to, um, to have these kind of laboratories where you could do project work and you could be more classes together or you could be uh, fewer people together. So uh, the municipality started uh, with a project with other architects where they tried to cover the courtyards and they tried to make a diagonal move through the, the school and it all ended in a um, big discussion in Denmark um, with a veto from the cultural minister. So when we got into this, maybe I should change the picture, it gets boring a little bit. Um, this is the famous section from, from the classroom um, of Arne Jakobsen where you have a small scale but still high ceiling and lots and lots of daylight all the way through uh, to the back of the classroom and the connection to the to the schoolyard, private schoolyard. Also the, this is the common schoolyard and also in 56, um, a little bit boring you could say but this is at least a large space. Oh. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> I have a cold. Um, I'm not. Don't worry. If I start coughing, it's. I will manage. I will. I will survive. I think. But um. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but what we started doing here was to to look at the program mainly to see if we could use the old school without spoiling the structure and without spoiling the school, um, and by small changes actually facilitate these new ways of we're learning. And one of the things we suggested was to move the library into this aula in the center of the school that was kind of dead because nobody used this big space. Um, and also we suggested um, opening up the classrooms so you could use two classrooms in connection. Um, <clears throat> these kind of small changes. And then we suggested that you could build underground, that um, the, the listed building actually start, stopped where you had the schoolyard surface. Um, and when you get underground, you, can, you could work uh, much more freely and you could make a building that somehow made a supplement um, or a parallel world to the existing very structured world uh, that was um, on ground. Uh, we didn't try to merge this into Arne Jacobsen's structure. We tried to make a, a, a complementary building and by using both, uh, try to facilitate what you were needing. So this is the extension, the complementary extension, which is underground, um, and you have the Arne Jacobsen detailing and the proportions on top, and by twisting that down, you get a much more fluent space um, when you get uh, down into the basement, and this fluent space could facilitate different kind of project work. Uh, it's a big laboratory, you could say. Uh, in connection to that, we, we made open classrooms for specialized um, classes like physics and chem chemistry and um, also physical education, a little bit of workout uh, and dance, and also a school kitchen where the, the pupil um, learn how to cook kind of simple um, meals. 
Here's the famous section uh, from Arne Jakobsen. Uh, maybe I can point up here where you have the, um, the kind of compression release theme where you, you walk along in this rhythmical um, hallway that is connecting all the, the classrooms. And we wanted to, to extend that and, and somehow make a feeling of instead of walking into a basement, actually walking um, into the sky. So you have this kind of release feeling when you get down to the basement, which is a little upside down. And here's the section um, with the Annie Jacobson detailing on top, um, twisting down uh, into this new geometry down, downstairs that makes a new plan uh, in the basement. And of course, this, this kind of detailing is really important because and nobody wanted to feel like being in a basement, uh, not the pupil, not the teachers, not the parents. Um, so this taking care of this detailing, not having anybody to feel that they had one, of, one and a half meter of of soil above um, was quite important. Um, mainly we did studies um, in physical model, taking it to the light laboratory at the Academy of Ar uh, Art and Architecture in Copenhagen and, and make, made really thorough studies on the level of light and, and also the quality of light and how we could uh, diffuse it into the, to the space to make it feel um, as bright and open um, and light as possible. So this is from the, the studies of the model here. Digging down, very expensive way of working, I have to say. But if you want a school to work like this, um, you might have to, <laughs> to do special things. Also, I will not spend too much time on the um, refurbishment of the existing school, which was mainly um, restoring it um, and also doing the energy uh, renovation, which meant new profiling, uh, same geometry, double glazing, uh, lots of steel enforcement and so forth. Lots of money put into this, uh, but, but hopefully not very uh, visible. But part of it was to furnish um, the old structure with new furniture that could facilitate new um, uh, ways of using the building, uh, and this is the library, this is uh, just a big furniture um, with actually with the original Arne Jacobsen chairs made for the school here. The rest uh, got lost um, before the, the building was listed and is now out on eBay, I think. Um, but this is the, the, the main idea is just to put in the furniture to facilitate and you can take it away and Arne Jacobsen is still here. Also creating different spaces, part of the, the program, part of the, the way of understanding the way that you learn. You would come into this library uh, with your teacher or alone or with a friend or in a group um, and you would work in different ways, um, very much individually but also very much um, helped by the, the teachers. Uh, some of the teachers helped a few pupils and the rest of the class might work by themselves. So, so you need to have a possibility of creating different spaces um, and also you need to be able to have the Arne Jacobsen large space um, possibility. So we created these kind of Harry Potter furniture where you can change the space within and have an intimate space but also an open space. Uh, at the same time you can use this as an auditorium and so forth. I won't spend too much time on this. This is toilets. Um, it was a big issue um, because uh, there was only toilets on the outside and um, to make a short story, long story, even shorter, uh, we did dug out these toilets underneath the existing building um, but making them as open as possible because uh, it's actually part of the, the, the places where you get mocked in schools is in toilets. This is where the, the weak uh, pupils will be drawn down and, and, and get mucked or put into the sink and, and so forth. So the toilets are made really, really open and you can actually escape. Um, you have a, an escape route. You can escape two places here. So to make an homage uh, to Arne Jacobson, we made these, um, this wallpaper that he did a sketch for and resized it and clad the walls and floors with it. This is how it looks like. Um, schoolyard everything brought back to the uh, original color scheme and so forth. 
and then coming down to the underground buildings with the courtyards where you can actually go out and you can make a project work outside. Uh, specific, uh, specifically in physics and chemistry, they do use the courtyards a lot. And as you can see, it's not a, a feeling of basement. It's, it's actually very bright uh, and you have lots of daylight down here. So we almost exaggerated this feeling of daylight also to have this possibility of daylight shower in contrast to the existing school that has black floors and, and um, not that much um, reflection. All the hallways go down into these small auditoriums where you can have um, small instructions with your teacher and then you could work outside in the, in the bigger space. Here you have the, the physics classroom uh, totally open towards the project space so you can see what's going on but you still have the sound uh, protection. So what goes on here is that the teacher will do instructions inside here and he will, um, uh, maybe they will do some experiments and so forth inside this room but then uh, the groups will go out two and two or in larger groups and they will work with their uh, data uh, into the big space and he is able to actually see what's going on uh, and also everybody has contact uh, with the, each other. I think that's a quite important thing in the a uh, way of thinking schools today is to have as much uh, transparency as possible. Um, of course, you need to have a little bit of concentration, uh, but you could do that in many ways by curtains or uh, by more flexible means. Uh, but what happens here is that we have the curtain, it's almost never drawn. Uh, you can easily have concentration within the, the classroom um, or instruction room, and then you could come out and work in the big space. It also gives uh, this feeling of volunteer being here voluntarily, you, you're not enclosed, you're not inside this prison-like situation um, which motivates uh, the pupils um, a lot more than being forced. And here you have the, the project space. Uh, the furniture can be moved around, of course, um, and you have sinks and you have uh, ducts so you can, you, can, you can use water on the floor and so forth. This is the um, common kitchen where everybody can come and cook. Um, they use it a lot during the day and in the afternoon and somebody will maybe make sandwiches and sell them off or something. There's always somebody that, that can uh, make a good deal. Um, but also they're used for the after school facility to, to make uh, cookies and so forth. It's also part of the project work to be able to, to, to cook. Uh, it can be part of a project if you have of um, Let's say Chile, you could go down here and make uh, empanadas and, and so forth. And they do, do actually work. These, uh, some of them play, but some of them do work. Uh, also, it's part of the idea is to have these breakout areas where you could lie down and you don't have to sit straight. You, you, you can position your body in different ways um, and you can still work very well and concentrated. You don't have to be... Um, positioned in a, in, a, in a certain way. This is an after-school facility um, and it's, uh, it's also a, a mixed program. Uh, it's, it's a sports facility for the, for the surroundings and for the neighborhood. It's a sports facility for the schools, uh, three schools that are surrounding this place. And it's a um, facility for, um, for the users, uh, the people living in the area that can, can use it in, in the afternoon and, and in the evening. And also it's an after-school facility. It's part of, also part of the educational program or it's more like a leisure program, you could say, uh, that after school from the third to the fifth grade, you have this possibility of going to an after-school facility. So two, three o'clock, whenever you're off from school, you would walk down here and you have different offers like workshops, uh, like textile workshops and, and um, wood workshops, uh, metal workshop, um, computers and so forth. You could also cook and uh, and the, the teachers will help you do what you want to do, but you don't have to do anything. You can also just hang out uh, with your friends. So this plan is mainly done to, uh, when you have this mixed program with a very big sports facility in a, at a big scale, in a neighborhood with a very small scale 
buildings, we wanted to somehow scale down the, the, the big scale to the small scale uh, to facilitate the children to have more cozy and homey areas and, and the possibility of finding your own way uh, in this place. So, um, so you have all these different kind of spaces and you can always, uh, according to your mood or your activity, you will find a place uh, that suits you um, in this place. So also it creates outdoor areas that are more intimate than this kind of big um, open space. So you would, you would enter um, in different ways, whether you're one user or the other, and you have um, a hot space in the middle where there's always a teacher where you could talk to a grown-up or adult uh, person, but then you can move out from this hot space uh, either to a kitchen, uh, dining room um, facility, or a workshop, a wooden workshop, um, a paint workshop. Uh, this is uh, usually used for a youth club and then you have the connection from this space to every other space uh, in the facility, so you always have transparency, you can see what's going on um, and, and who's where. And now when you get to the top floor, you will have um, a textile workshop uh, with a double height connection to the workshop downstairs. Uh, you have a um, computer workshop with a connection to the dining hall. Um, and you have um, a dance workshop here with connection to the sports facilities. This is how it looks like. Um, so the sports hall broken down uh, a little bit to, to, to make it more downscale and um, quite traditional but working with daylight again is um, really important. Of course the daylight has to be diffused uh, so you don't get blinded. And with the connection to the dance uh, space up here. And when you get to the other end, you have this kind of more um, anarchistic, um, small town um, atmosphere that you create. Uh, you create these small spaces in between, and also you have, of course, outdoor activities. Um, upstairs, small outdoor, intimate spaces. Entrance. We use color quite a lot when we work with children, uh, always trying to get um, a reflection or work with the reflection. This is kind of making uh, everything welcome to have this um, warm yellow reflection. It can be very gray in the winter time, I, I tell you. Hot space uh, with connection to all other spaces here. and the textile workshop, computer workshop, and, and always trying to create these corners and spaces where you could be yourself, you can be in individual, you, you can be out of the scene, you don't have to be part of a big group all the time. When you have this kind of institutionalized uh, daily life that I think that Scandinavian children does have, it's quite important to provide for these spaces where you can withdraw um, with your best friend or alone. This is a um, quite unique thing. It's a children's culture house and I think it is one of the f only ones in the world. It's a, it's a house, it's a kind of a um, voluntary institution or it's not an institution because it's actually a school where you can come and learn different kind of cultural um, acts uh, with professionals. So you would have professional dancers and musicians and um, artists that will work with children uh, uh, at a certain time, maybe in, uh, in a week or two weeks or maybe every evening for a year or so forth, but they will uh, it will be um, voluntarily and uh, it will be with professionals, not with teachers, not with pedagogues. Um, and uh, it's set in a quite um, troublesome area in, in Amma outside uh, Copenhagen, a part of Copenhagen, uh, and it's part of a, a whole cultural um, area, you could say, 
where you have activities for elderly people and you have this kind of neighborhood center and uh, there's a musical place um, and so forth. Uh, but the site uh, is, was extremely small and um, it's, uh, this site here was actually only the, the we had to build the whole site, we had no outdoor area, and then of course we have the connection with the rest of the areas. Um, the, the site was so difficult, uh, somehow we had to connect from a two-story building to a six-story building, um, at the same time taking care of the, the contextual, um, the, na the neighbors, uh, they should get enough daylight and sunlight and so forth, so uh, mainly the concept is to connect the two very art facades and to push down the middle to create a kind of mountainous situation inside the house um, and then getting daylight to the backyard of the other houses. This is quite special because we work with the, um, with the the future uses, we, we work with the children in several workshops um, to try to understand what kind of house do you expect, not what kind of facilities would you like to have, but what kind of atmosphere and feeling, what kind of um, special places would you like to have in this house to make it your house and to make it not a, an adult house, but a house uh, where children are, are making culture. Um, so we work with the, the children with um, sort of right hand, hands on, uh, with cardboard and paper and chalks and collage and, and so forth. And we talked a lot um, afterwards uh, trying to see what they had been doing. And then we, we boiled it down to, to 10 points that the whole house is actually uh, done um, on top of, which is more like themes like being alone together or being alone or um, creating my own world or um, the beach, which is kind of the open space, everything can happen and so forth. So, so the program that was uh, quite clear, which was workshops um, and, and different facilities for dance and uh, art, uh, was merged with this kind of children's program that was totally different. But the, the main idea uh, with these two mountains was to have an enclosed mountain in one end that uh, had more concentration, but still you could still be in connection with each other. You have the possibility of getting inspired from the other activities, but you had the, the enclosure that could give you a concentration. Then there's this ex exhibit stair where you could exhibit everything you do. And underneath, of course, all these um, art spaces where you could withdraw uh, and do something very different from what hap what's happening in the groups. Uh, this is part of the small spaces. One is called um, a, a look to the, to the sky uh, or it could be hiding with your best friend and so forth. And here's the, con the, the concept. Um, we had to save some money, so we had to take away the roof terrace, which was the only outdoor space we actually had in the house. And here's the model. We work with models mainly um, in the conceptual phase because it's so much easier and it's an open process and you can work a lot of people together on one um, idea instead of working in Revit or in the computer where you only have one um, person actually controlling the, the computer. So this is part of our work process to test everything in model of course, also in 3D. And here you have the staircase and the, the hideouts and the spaces underneath. And the, the different workshops uh, on one side here, uh, exhibition space, and also it's about moving again because you need to move physically. You, don't, you can't sit down all day uh, and work. You have to move, you have to be um, somehow inspired to do that. So these diagonal surfaces as part of them the idea. And here's the conceptual drawing uh, with the, this kind of open space that you can use for almost anything, exhibitions, um, small lectures and so forth, entrance to the cafe up here, and entrance down to the uh, multi-purpose um, theater space, and then the, the workshops up here with the staircase, and a small library, hideout, uh, library and hideout, hideout space. Um, and all kinds of small little um, spaces in between. And here's the cladding. Um, 
of the house. It doesn't really look like a grown-up or adult house. It has this um, almost um, surreal feeling of the windows and the scale is um, is, is upwards, um, which was an intentional thing that we wanted it to be. Um, and here's the render, and here's the the house. Um, the whole idea with these window frames was to be able to create um, a certain world for the children that you could change, you can make it into your own, so you can actually change the inside or the lining of the, of the window frames and they're deep enough for you to, to sit in or to work in. Um, so some of them can be changed and you can make it into your own space in between inside and outside, so, which is kind of a special place to be. Uh, you're not inside and you're not outside, you're, in, you're floating in between. Uh, and the connection to the plaza um, and the existing building. And also the roof, um, the windows from the, the skylight, it's called. And here you have this window frame um, with the children uh, doing collages in here. Um, and that can be changed and somebody else can come and do a, um, an artwork. This is inside the, the beach, kind of multi-purpose space connecting all the other spaces. And the, the gallery um, where you can actually, you can climb here but you could also make use this as fixtures so you can have all, all these different exhibitions even though you have a um, surface that's um, inclining you can still use this as an exhibit um, surface but they like to crawl connection both to the cafe and to the theater space you can use this staircase as a spectator space as well everything is kind of um, flexible. You can hardly see that, but this is uh, boxes with mirror on one side. On the, on the other side, you have a wardrobe, so you can use it to, when you want to change clothes. And this is a children's uh, band, I think, with the teachers um, doing uh, a performance. One of the small spaces is the, the sky space. It's only like two or three square meters, so not a lot of space is used here, but it's an important space to be able to recreate yourself in between uh, your work. You can paint on the walls here um, and on the floor if you want to. And another small space uh, for recreation um, in between the other spaces. Hmm. And you can look down into the performance space from the cafe here. Multi-purpose uh, workshop. This is the last educational um, institution. This is a university for economics and it's in Sweden, it's in Lund. Um, and I will go through it very quickly because I think I'm out of time. Um, <coughs> but mainly it's uh, it's um, facility uh, that has to take care of uh, scientists uh, that works in their small offices all day but also has to take care of the students uh, and the educational part which is the auditoriums or the lecture halls um, and classrooms uh, and so forth and uh, um, part of the uh, idea here is to keep it as open as possible of course to have as much sharing as possible because uh, the when you have education now, um, part of education is, of course, networking, but also learn from each other and to share uh, knowledge. So being, um, if you're a, a student, but also if you're a lecturer or if you're a um, scientist, you need to, to share um, your work and you need to discuss and you need to be able to meet. Um, so creating and facilitating for these meeting places and this kind of natural um, working together and, um, and sharing um, is very important when you plan for a new institution. So um, this, this 
Gemeinskap, which is uh, Swedish, it means um, what does it mean? It means um, togetherness, you could say, um, is kind of the, the binding factor of this uh, project. You need to somehow make it visible for everybody what everybody is doing, at the same time, of course, making enough quiet and concentration for, for the scientists to work. Um, but um, you also want to mix the scientists and you want to mix the, um, the students as much as possible to make a dynamic uh, learning environment. So basically, it's about making. It's also a, there's an old facility that we have to connect to, uh, which is not so interesting. Uh, but basically, what we did was to, to connect all the the common facilities together in one sort of more fluent space um, that we defined as a city. So you could also find your way through it, um, and then connect the scientists um, in this space here uh, all the way down towards the most uh, public space um, in the bottom floor. Uh, you, you can orientate yourself. This is the, the main uh, floor with all the auditoriums, uh, scientists, and then again students up here, so you, you kind of mix uh, both things. Here's the indoor reference, uh, the knowledge card in Rome, and the indoor of the university as much connection as possible through the building, also to um, make the public uh, come through it so you don't have this enclosed world. You need to, to open it up as much as possible, uh, also for the students to feel part of the outer world. And this is the distribution, um, different connections to the outside and the out, outdoor areas, but also to the city uh, around it. Going through and here's the, the plan. Uh, basically, we, the facilities kind of spread out, um, but the, lots of facilities for um, group discussions and um, recreation. This is the inner yards um, references. Here's the kind of binding uh, atrium that, that goes through everything, uh, but also the, the more quiet places like the scientists' uh, offices to the students' uh, place, another courtyard. Uh, a discussion about offices, I won't go into that, which is about how you make it as effective and flexible as possible. How you meet, how you can see the world outside you. Uh, greenscape, flexibility and how you can rent this out to somebody else if your university is doing badly. Uh, another way of having your furniture. And the section where you see um, the connection between the public and the more private spaces. The facade is um, worked at as being very sustainable. So we work with wood, a wood construction, massive uh, wood construction, which has a CO2 neutrality, um, and then uh, protected with glass on the outside that we can also use as a natural ventilation duct. Um, so it's kind of a smart uh, way of looking at the design without uh, installing too much um, technology, still having um, um, a basically a sustainable building. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sayın Dorte Mandrapa çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Dorte Dorte Mandrapa soru cevap bölümünü yönetmek üzere İstanbul Bilgi Üniversitesi